All right, you see, ready. Uh, in your yeah, counter down in three seconds, we sure. we're starting setting up the webinar. Going on, Nj. All right, three, two. Ah, Ah, Yes, uh, Hotep, uh, you know, Royals, um, uh, uh, we had to start uh, in that, uh, you know, manner. Why? Because on the 23rd of, uh, you know, uh, this month, we, we were then, uh, you know, ushering a new principle as we enter the, uh, uh, the season of Ma'at from set um, is the one that, uh, you know, um, scattered uh, everything. You know, uh, now my art is bringing order, remembering all those parts that were scattered uh, by set. That is why, you know, we had to start that way to honor that principle and the season that uh, we are in now. City, ah, my art. 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 Yes, um, yes. yes. Um, uh, today's, uh, you know, uh, a topic is very interesting because it touches the core of who we are as African people and uh, how our ancestors uh, used to um, uh, share knowledge and transfer knowledge, you know, to generations, uh, you know, to come. Now we want to um, uh, investigate um, uh, as to how, you know, our ancestors, you know, uh, uh, shared that knowledge and passed on that knowledge, you know, to the, to the community, you know, in general. Um, uh, especially if you look at uh, all institutions of, uh, you know, learning uh, in ancient Kemet, uh, you will find those uh, words that says, know thyself. Me, meaning that uh, before you can learn everything else in the universe, you've got to understand and master yourself. So how does that uh, translate uh, to an African education system if we use that as a point of departure? So we have Indra Vugazi here. Ah, Indra Vugazi. Indra Vugazi here. You know, she'll be sharing, uh, you know, all that uh, information for us and actually guide us as to, because uh, some of these things, we're not talking about them, but we are preparing the ground and laying the foundation so that uh, when the universe, there's resonance between, you know, um, uh, the heaven and earth uh, and the timing just, uh, you know, opens up an opportunity for us to actually implement you know, we're not just talking about these things. These are things that we have to implement, you know, if we are to correct all the ills, you know, in our life. Education is the most important thing, you know, because you find that uh, today we are pay paying a premium to colonize, uh, you know, our kids. So we've got to move away from that, uh, you know, situation. In a few years' time, we should have our own schools and institutions where we teach, you know, our young ones and stop depending on the colonizer to also, you know, educate your generation as if, uh, you know, you have no content. There's no continent uh, in the world that has the content that we have. 
you know, uh, in Africa. So we don't need any foreign content. It's only that uh, our leaders, uh, you know, are not, you know, resonating. Or the frequency that, uh, you know, um, uh, they are on is completely off the mark. It, uh, you know, uh, uh, all the time they're promoting that uh, we must continue to be slaves, and they will reject that. We are never going to be slaves. We are going to free ourselves. We are going to free the whole of the continent and all black people because there are other people who are advanced in terms of uh, living, you know, uh, this content we're talking about. Like in the UK, you know, I know there's a community there. In the US, there's a community that are not just theorizing. They are practicalizing this thing. So this is the unity we need. We need to unite with those people so that we don't reinvent the wheel. You know, as soon as we are ready, we should know that, uh, you know, we have all the resources we need to back us up so that we free our minds and free the generation uh, that is to come. They mustn't uh, grow up uh, with this mentality, this slave mentality that uh, most of our people, uh, you know, find themselves uh, in. So, uh, you know, I'll give, uh, you know, an opportunity to go to, to then share some light for us as to how we can then reintroduce, you know, when the time is right, the African education system. And what do we mean about, uh, you know, this uh, African education system? Tokoza, Dovgaz. Tokoza, Tokoza. What an interesting topic that we have today. And thank you very much for having me again today. Um, this topic, of course, could go for, for months trying to unpack what is the African education system, what did our ancestors give to us, how did they transmit knowledge, how did they allow us to know ourselves. So today we'll literally just be touching the surface and of course keep un unpacking it as the time goes on. If I may be allowed to share my screen. So today we're still on decolonization Sundays. We're still looking at the African calendar with the GEC system. We've just moved into the, into the season of, of Ma'at and Ma'at is really about how everything weaves together. And our ancestors, uh, they educated within the realms of Ma'at. And I think what we may start to realize is that in this modern day, we have lost Ma'at in our education system. And therefore we are, as Lauren Hill said, miseducated uh, or diseducated or uneducated in many ways. So today we'll just start to unpack a little bit about what the African education system is. We all start with these three basic laws, as was said in Kemet, know thyself, as below, so above, as above, so below, and translating this to as within, so without. And then of course, yesterday as today, and tomorrow as today. So everything comes up to what we're doing now. The past is behind us, the future is in front of us. We can only change things now in the present. We have gone on into what is Kemet, and we've come to realize that Kemet is actually where we are now. It is a location, it is a time, it is a movement, and it is a consciousness, and it is rooted in the Black that we are. It is the Black land. We have traced where Kemet started, and we've realized that Kemet did not start in the north of the continent, but right from the beginning of the lowest part of the continent, moving up along the line of Zeptepi. All of that, the movement of it, the time of it, the consciousness of it is Kemet. So that's what we're doing here, is just unpacking what came from the great empire of Kemet. We have gone over Sankofa, the importance of looking back learning from the past in order to learn from it and knowing it is okay because what we bring into the present will inform what we take into the future and what we build into the future and we have the capacity to build even greater than what we had in the past so we learn from the past in order to give to the future and that is a sankofa feedback system a principle in science and what we'll learn or what we will learn in future times is that sankofa is actually a very deeply scientific system that cuts across many disciplines and this is just one of the ways in which our african ancestors taught us a symbol which unpacks multiple disciplines from astronomy, from psychology, to geology, to geography, to nature, to, to physiology, all of it encapsulated in one symbol called Sankofa. Go back and fetch it, Sankofa says, so that we can create a better future. Once again, why are we even having this conversation? 
we're having this conversation because there's been a disturbance. Something happened that stopped us from being able to tap into the education as we knew it in the past, the way our ancestors gave it to us, and to learn from it and to grow from it in the way that our ancestors used to. We know that uh, there was a conference that took place a couple of hundred years ago. And at this, conf at this conference in Berlin, a couple of men sat around a table, they drew a map of our African continent and they chopped it up into pieces and decided who would get a slice of what, how much they would get and how they would go about de-educating or colonizing that particular part of the world or that particular part of the continent that they were going to take control over. And so we have everything that happened within uh, colonialism. We have everything that came from it, whether it was the, 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 all the colonies that came about, whether it was the inferiority complex that came from it, whether it was the social culture that was, uh, that was um, changed, whether it was capitalism that replaced the Ubuntu way, whether it was migration that was forced in order to enforce capitalism, whether it was appropriation, whether it was political power, whether it was mercantilism, whether it was slavery, whether it was the majority reduced into a minority, whether it was the social cultural mutterings, whether it was dialectical systems that were brought in place, whether disease came in, whether there was secession, all of this came with this beast called colonialism or colonization. And this, in terms of education, was further attributed to what happened in, in, uh, in, in Europe in the 18th century, which was called the Age of Enlightenment. And in this Age of Enlightenment, those that were the purveyors of knowledge sought to revolutionize how the mind worked, sought to revolutionize reason, sought to re revolutionize how everything took place. And so we saw economic systems changing, philosophical systems changing, intellectual discourses being brought place, all being brought in, you know, in terms of how people should be educated or how, you know, educational knowledge should be passed on from one to the other. And in this uh, enlightenment, therefore came this uh, a revolution you know, where a new way of thinking according to those of the enlightenment about the world developed. And it was based on observation and the willingness to question its assumptions. Yes, this is great. The, 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 being able to question is really, really important. But in what way was it denuded by this age of enlightenment? The Enlightenment writers challenged many accepted ideas about government and society. They sought to revolutionize the way things were. The, the, the idea swept through the whole of European society and colonial America. And therefore, this is what they took into them, as you can see the dates between the 1550 to 1789, were the dates when colonization was start, just starting to really take, uh, take form. And therefore, all these uh, thoughts and feelings and ideas from the Age of Enlightenment fed into what we know to be our education system today. And these are the great ones of the Age of Enlightenment. We have Fre Fr you know, Francis Bacon, who introduced the scientific method. We have René Descartes, who was the so-called father of rationalism. We have John Locke, who brought forth unalienable rights. We have New Isaac Newton, who brought through empirical research. Uh, we have um, Voltaire, who used satire to insult the state. John Payne, you name them. These are the the, the proponents or those who came about you know, bringing about the kind of education that we now have today, which has replaced the education that we had in the past. With the Age of Enlightenment, we had an, a certain ontology, a sort of way of knowing or coming to know knowledge. So we had me mechanistic, this was brought in from Newton, where everything, humans and life is seen as a machine. And therefore we had mechanistic thinking. So if it's seen as a machine, it can be controlled as a machine. And therefore the subtleties enjoyed by nature fell away in terms of deterministic materialism, reducing everything to its smallest part, reductionism, seeing everything from the outside, objectivity, dualism, separating mind over matter, monism, seeing everything you know, as a fragmented whole, natural sel selection in which it is the, the survival of the fittest, you know, only the fittest, the most powerful, the richest could survive. And then dichotomy and binary op opposition, seeing everything as either or instead of both and. All of this, almost an antithesis of what African education was. And so the disturbance became an apartheid. 
And when we're speaking about apartheid, yes, there was the system that was introduced uh, um, in, so in South Africa as an official system, uh, which sought to, to separate race from race, to separate tribe from tribe. But this apartheid went even deeper. It went into apartheid of how knowledge itself was constructed, an apartheid in terms of how education itself was constructed. And therefore, this age of enlightenment from the 16th to the 17th to the 18th century brought about silo thinking and apartheid in the way we think and apartheid in the way we impart knowledge and apartheid in the way we learn and apartheid in the way we teach. And this is what I would like to call silo thinking. Everything put in its own little granary, no way for interweaving, no way for interdependence, no way for interrelatedness. And since this is, according to Gek, the system, um, the season of Ma'at, therefore denuding the, the Ma'at, removing Ma'at, because Ma'at is all about interconnectedness, interrelatedness, and interdependence. And so in the silo way of thinking, the silo way of education, Everything is taught in silos, in separation. We have science in one box, technology in another box, mathematics in one box, language in another box, art in one box, history in one box, biology in one box, chemistry in one box, geography in one box, physics, civics, you name it. Everything categorized according to its particular little box and not being able to speak to other boxes if the need, need arises and therefore creating a fragmentation um, if we talk, look into the into the story of Osir, Osir was split into 14 pieces by set. And this is what this fragmented education system has done. And yet life as we know it is not partitioned. Our lives are not mathematics in one hand and history in another hand and art in another. Life itself is an amalgamation of all of them in a very peculiarly organized way. It may seem like chaos, but chaos is a theory itself which orders the, the universe. And so if we are to live life in partitions, we are not able to get the whole and therefore we're not able to educate our children in order for them to be able to know themselves firstly, to have yesterday as today, tomorrow as today in order to create Sankofa, a greater future from the past into the present. This uh, uh, life, uh, the, this partitioned life stops us from being able to create a whole and therefore we have to go back to the drawing board really to re-look what was it that our education system from our ancestors held and how is it that they brought it into us and what is it that's carried in our DNA today that we may be able to unpack in order to create a greater future. So our education system was invalidated according to the system that came with the age of enlightenment. Um, here we have our Western education system where everything is in silos, even when they seek to look into the deeper mysteries, like here they want to be in tune with the infinite or they want to be one with the cosmos. But even that is put into one little book separate from the book next door. And yet we know that in our education system, everything is held in circularity. Everything, the whole cosmos, mathematics, you know, whether it is currency, whether it is economy, whether it is spirituality, whether it is emotionality, whether it is um, economics, education, it's all held in circularity in the bowl of knowledge. And yet this way has been invalidated by the Western paradigm that was fed by the age of enlightenment, which said, this is all mumbo jumbo. It is all superstition. We can't touch it. We can't reduce it. We can't have an either or of it. We can't you know, apply the reasoned uh, way of the, of the dominant paradigm to it. Therefore, it must be invalid. Therefore, it is not education. Therefore, it lives in the realms of superstition. And yet, if we go back to our ancestors, we will see right now we're speaking to each other through technology the technology of modern technology with well, computing sciences and the internet, all of which runs on a binary system. Computers are running on a binary system, just a series of ones and zeros, ones and zeros, ones and zeros is the, is the, is the data that is being fed that is allowing me here in my little study to speak to you in your uh, in, um, respective places just a series of code of ones and zeros, ones and zeros moving forward through this, um, this, this, this uh, uh, technology system. And yet this technology system, this binary system is no different from our African binary system. When we do the IFA, when we do any form of divination, this is exactly the, 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 the system that we're using, binary. But if we come here and we look at IFA, 
be far from our Yoruba brothers and sisters, or even any other um, uh, divination system such as Hakata from Zimbabwe, or even throwing the bones here. We are not looking only at a binary system of base two. We can go to as much as base four, we can go to base eight, and we can go right up to base 16, which is what the IFA is also based on. So we realize that this system is a highly complex and advanced system, which is far more complex than the simple binary system, which is allowing us to communicate today. Because this very complex system, which is at once binary, at once into the base four, at once to the base eight, into the base 16, allows us not only to communicate with ourselves, knowing ourselves, but allows us to communicate with the mysteries, the no unknown and unknowable, the cosmos, the stars, all of this through our simple education system passed down from our ancestors from millennia after millennia after millennia. So what is our African way of thinking? We have spoken about this in all the previous uh, lectures that have been given on decolonization Sundays. We have said when we come together with an African circumspect way of thinking or circumspect way of, um, of, of educating, we must look at the many ways in which we look at one particular thing. So for one, we have the principle of segregation. And if we give the segregation a deity, this is Sebek or Anpu. And what Sebek does is he looks at the outer differences between that which may be in, inwardly different, um, similar. So he looks and he sees that right here, Mkulu and I are sitting um, in this particular webinar and I am female and Mkulu is male. And so it looks at that and says, ha, huh, okay, that's one way we can look at what's happening between Mkulu and, uh, and, and Gogo here. So Sebek looks at the outer differences between that which may be inwardly uh, similar. Then we look at congregation and if it had a deity, this deity is Heteru, the wonderful creative sensual one. And Heteru says, but wait a minute, I want to look at the outer similarities between that which may be inwardly different. So yes, Mkulu and Gogo are male and female, but you know what? They both have blood running through them. They both have melanated skins. And so what I see is coming together, a congregation as opposed to a segregation. But then they hand the baton over to Herkuti, Herkuti, who is the warrior. And Herkuti says, wait a minute, I want to analyze this a bit better. Herkuti looks at the inner differences between that which may be outwardly similar. You know, so he looks to unpack that which, even though we may look at ourselves and we see that we're all Africans on this particular forum, we may have differing ideologies, we may have differing spiritualities, we may have differing economic backgrounds, we may have different histories. And so Herukuti seeks to analyze these, you know, and take it all apart in looking to see what is it that causes, um, um, that may be the source of conflicts if we haven't, you know, put it into an analytical paradigm. And then we've just spoken about the season of Ma'at. Ma'at says, wait a minute, I have a different way of looking at things. I am going to synthesize everything. I am going to see the inner differences, the inner, sorry, the inner similarities in that which will be outwardly different. So yes, I am, she's male and he's female. Yes, we have different ideologies and we have different political backgrounds and we've got different histories and we've got different economies, yes. But ultimately, we all have the blood of Neter flowing through us. All of us are vibrating to do. And therefore, this is how we bring it all together in interdependence, interrelatedness, and interconnectedness. And then Heru, the one who sees everything, is the circumspect one. He is the one who says, wait, I can use segregation, I can use congregation, I can use analysis, and I can use synthesis. And when I use all of them, I see the whole picture. I fly as a falcon across the landscape and I see everything. And this is why Heru has this eye removed by Tehuti. And when it is it's replaced, so he has his eye removed by, uh, by Set, by Tehuti, he's able to be able to see the whole picture, which is circumspection, segregation, congregation, analysis, and synthesis. This is the African or circumspect way of thinking. This is the way of Heru, the one who has Heru vision. As we spoke earlier, Mkuli told us that a horoscope is actually Heru vision. And so this African or circular way of thinking is actually a fractal. Now, when we go into mathematics, we'll learn a lot about fractals and you know, it's, it's an incredible way of, of unpacking the patterns of the universe. And we'll realize that African 
education, it looks like my sound may be gone. Excuse me. It's better now, Coco. Is it better? Okay. Yes. Okay. And so African or circular, I'm sorry, as I was saying, um, fractals are the patterns of the universe or the, the, the patterns of life as we know it today. And all of, um, of African education is based on fractals, on this mathematical principle of patterns of the universe. And this is what we have lost with the age of enlightenment, the age of reason, which sought to break up these patterns, you know, in order to bring in determinism and a dichotomy and so-called reason, monism, and everything else that came with uh, the modern scientific method. And as we know, life is not partitioned. Life is like a clay pot, as we have said the other week. And in this clay pot, when our grandmother shows us how to make this clay pot, she shows you which soil to use, which sand to use, which clay to use, why this one and not that one. She tells you all the properties inherent in it. And there she's coming into the realms of chemistry. She's coming into the realms of geography. She's coming into the realms of geology as she describes that in detail. And then she brings it together with water and she shows you how you mix this particular partition with that particular partition in order to have something that will hold a particular fire. She shows you how to mold it and in this molding, she's teaching you how to be tactile. She's teaching you how to use your, your, all your senses, your sense of sight, your sense of smell, your sense of taste, your sense of touch. She's using you how to integrate the fullness of who you are because as you're molding this pot, you are igniting certain neurons within the brain, you know, which are helping to fire a different way of thinking and seeing the cosmos. And then you place this on the fire. And with the fire, knowing how to mix the, the water with the clay and the heat of the fire, you have to understand physics and you have to understand chemistry and you have to understand reactions and you have to understand what it's gonna hold. And you have to understand the mathematics of this. You have to understand the equation. Oh, crap. Have we lost to Coco them, Kulu? Tawazam Kulu, just a second. I think um, she's experiencing some challenges okay. um yeah the okay. computer Gokoko did have some some technical problems earlier okay. um which we are trying to resolve so uh, these things do happen um uh, i think So was I'm of course. Um Ukoko Uru Tendo Salungisa e computer yake. She's had some uh, technical issues uh, since earlier today. I think e computer yake is has been running over time. Um, as you know, Makosi, we come from the credo memoration uh, ceremony which we did yesterday, being the twenty-fifth uh, of July, in Klaga twenty-five Gundu and that was an involved uh, ceremony. All our systems have been stretched to the limit. Um, so please bear with us, Marco, so we don't mean to have these uh, situations uh, happen this way. Please bear with us. Ukoko uh, is just sorting out Umshinuake. She is going to come back just now. Um, yeah, Mukulu. Uh, in the meantime, Kulu Bengitim Champis and Akalanje eat dialogue and got to cook a saloon as Mshinwake. Sikali eat dialogue and other topic education. It's an important uh, topic, Kulugazi, Tina, SSNA, Gane, SS, Nane. We are experiencing serious challenges. Ngoba laying Gane is Fundisa, E. Colin Zabelugo. And that's got to have some form of adverse physical or not physical, but psychological effect. Um, 
in Kondoniabo, in Jalaba Kabanga, in Jalabenza. Um, and today we wanted truly to show uh, the importance of African African education, the importance of Injela or Koko, Ababiogati Bifundi Sangayo, so that Abantu Bazo was of Tola Rashuguti, Yaiba Legeganga Gana, Injela Gok Fundi Sangayo Mandu. Um, yeah. No, in Jalo and Kesha, you know, Isem Kora Lendre Sienza, Nam Shanji Moba. Sizama Ugubuele Muva, Sio Osha, Loko Oshega, Sikone Wutisake, and build, you know, a much brighter future. I mean, you know, mean, I believe in this thing, your Koko would know thyself. Remember, Uguti Ingani, Izalwa Ifumbete. You come in this world with your own, you know, frequency that you are resonating at this frequency and everything about you, you know, can be a one size fits all. Mm -hmm. So you already, Uzalwa Nalendo Zalwena. So Yindoge, you know, the African education system wanted to concentrate more on uh, who you are as a person and nurture that so that by the time you know, uh, you, you, you grow to a certain level, you become a master in who you are. And uh, that brings uh, contentment. Oh, thank you so much, Koko is back. I'm we back can now uh, continue. I lost my thank signal. you so much, Koko. Thank you so much, Koko, no problem. I'll just continue from where I left off. My apologies, my sincere apologies. No, you can continue, Coco. Okay, thank you so much. As I was saying, my sincere apologies that I got cut off. Um, so as you're building the fire with your clay pot, you have to understand the mathematics, you have to understand the physics, you have to understand the chemistry, you have to understand the biology, you know, and you have to understand how you interact. And you have to understand what's happening to your neural pathways as you're molding that particular uh, pot. And once it is molded, once it is, um, once it is, it is, it is, it is complete. Then your grandmother teaches you how to how to cool it, and then after that, how to decorate it. And in that decorating, she's showing you the different minerals that use particular colors, you know, and how you can create certain patterns. And each of these patterns are fractals, and each of these fractals have a story to them. And in this, she's teaching you cosmology. She's teaching you about the stars. She's teaching you about nature. She's teaching you about humanity. She's teaching you about puberty. If you're a young girl or a young boy, she's teaching you how to go into the future as an adult. She's teaching you economy. She's teaching you, um, you know, she's teaching you everything that you need in order to be able to survive in the world. And with each and every pattern, each and every notch, each and every visual that you're putting into this particular clay pot, you are allowing yourself to grow into knowing yourself and knowing that everything that you hold in that pot is part of the education that has been passed down from generation to generation of ancestors. And then once it is completely set and it is completely decorated and she puts it on that fire and you sit in a circle around it and she perhaps cooks in it, you know, she perhaps boils water in it with standing once again the heat and the fire of, of the, the heat of the fire. And in that sitting around of circularity, the education continues with the central point. And in that we allow Ma'at to prevail because in that circle, we're all seeing things from different angles. And in seeing things from different angles, we're allowing the circularity of knowledge to perpetuate and to grow. And then we're able to consume that which has been eaten. We get into nutrition, we get into the body, we get into astronomy, uh, 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 into, um, uh, into the body, into anatomy, into physiology, knowing how all of that manages us in order to be able to feed our brains, feed our spirits, feed our souls in order to create a greater future. So life is a clay pot. It is not segregated into one subject after one subject after one subject. It is a, a collective whole. And this is how our, our African ancestors taught us through ages of time. 
and there we have it our grandmother showing us how to educate through the the the, the clay pot of education so let's enter a bit more into what this african education is once again i've said it is not segregated in one subject after the other subject after the other subject. And yet all the subjects that you are inherent in the dominant paradigm in which we learn are important for the African education system. We have said that it is premised upon the African or circumspect way of thinking. And it is encompassed with nature, the whole, which is nature, the whole, all that is, every single aspect or every single thing that exists in nature is part of our African education system. It is the setting upon which everything manifests and therefore the setting upon which all learning um, takes place. And so we go into nature and in our African education system, we know that we learn from the elders, but not only do we learn from the elders, we learn from the ground that we walk on, we learn from the land, we learn from the trees, we learn from the landscapes, we learn from the sun, we learn from the moon, we learn from the stars, we learn from the waters, we learn from the spirits within the waters, we learn from the spirits within the trees, we learn from plants, we learn from roots, we learn from the words of the, the, the saw of the wind as it blows around us, we learn from the birds, we learn from the bees, we learn from the butterflies, we learn from the flowers, we learn from all aspects of nature. This is the setting of an African education system. All that is around us, all that is Nater. And we continue to learn from everything that has become from us. We learn from the disasters in time, we learn from the clouds, we learn from seeing the patterns inherent in the universe. We learn from seeing what happens when it is that a storm is coming. How do animals behave? We learn from their behavior. We learn from our behavior because unfortunately reason has put us out of sync with learning to learn from the, the, the whispers and the patterns of nature. And so this is how the Africa, the setting of the African education system is placed. And in this, we learn in a graduated way, we learn that education is not flat. Education is actually quite tumultuous. It allows us to grow and to climb. And as we're climbing this great mountain, where it, with each step, we're gaining new levels of knowledge. Not only are we, are we exercising our bodies, not only are we increasing our capacity, not only are we increasing our capacity to learn by, because the, as you know, the higher you go, the lower the, in altitude, the lower the oxygen reserves there are for us. And therefore, the more you have to, 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 to have capacity within your lungs. And this is exactly what education is, the African education system is. It says the higher you go in altitude, the more you have to, you know, to expand in order to allow the more to come in. And the African education system is one which we hold hands together in gaining this, you know, which the hands are held from the ancestors that have gone before us to the elders who exist now amongst us, to those of us who are carrying the knowledge in order to hand it over to the new generations who will take it on into the future. And so what does the African classroom look like? And we will all know that in most African classrooms, the center is the tree. And why is the center a tree? And not only, and the reason that there is a center is because it is, we sit in circularity in an African education system. And when you see that center, and when you see a circle around it, a dot with a circle around it, that is actually the symbol for Nater. So our classroom is Naterized, it's naturalized. We sit in, an, in a natural way in order to allow the fullness of knowledge to come. But why is this? We'll unpack that a little bit later. So what do our classrooms today look like? If we go to any school and look at the classrooms today, most of them are in buildings and most of these buildings are square or rectangular. And uh, our children sit in rows, the teacher is at the front and if depending on where you are in the rows uh, within the classroom, either you only see the teacher if you're at the front of the classroom and the blackboard or you see if you're at the back of the classroom behind the heads of the children in front of you and then you see the teacher so you only have one focal point that you're able to make connection with for everything else they're either behind you or you're only seeing behind them you're not able to meet eye to eye you're not able to be circumspect because you're not able to see the eye of heru because this is what Heru needed. He was blinded when his eye couldn't see. 
and our African, our modern education systems blinds us because we're not able to see the whole. We see everything in fragments, in silos. We only see the backs. We do not see the front and we do not see the whole. But let's now go into the physics of the square, you know, versus the physics of, for example, a triangle. Now, here we've got a square as a, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a geometric shape. And if we put a weight on top of something that is square in nature, it then creates a shear. The weight causes it to become distorted. Uh, as we see here, there's a shear. A force is applied, it shears, it changes and it distorts. And so this may seem a bit metaphorical, but let's think about it. When you're in a square building and you are in the square building, which when a force is applied, it will shear. Imagine what's happening to the knowledge that is within that building. When the force is allowed, it shears, it becomes distorted. And this then becomes what Lauren Hill will call the miseducation. The education that we're then fed in the square building is distorted. Why is it distorted? Because energy does not flow well in a circle, I mean, in a square. Um, if we had energy that was flowing in between this particular square, if it's, it would become dampened. By dampening, I mean it becomes less and less and less and less and less until it, it moves to zero. And if that energy is going from corner to corner, it completely becomes obliterated. So the energy that is inherent in the knowledge that's being passed on within a square shape actually becomes dampened, actually becomes delimit limited, actually becomes denuded because of any force that's applied. This is physics. But look at what our ancestors did. Let's go to back into Kemet and look at the Great Pyramid um, or any of the other pyramids. And then let's translate this into our modern huts, our, our ancestor, ancestral huts and the structures that they've made. This is a triangle. And a triangle is actually the most stable shape that there is. Because if you apply a force to a triangle, it maintains its shape as opposed to a square, which is a very unstable structure, which moves if you apply a force to it. And this is because of these hinged corners. And when you have a triangle, if you have uh, energy that, that's moving within a triangle, it keeps bouncing off these particular um, uh, angles. And because there's an angle, instead of this 180 degrees that we see here with the square, because of the angles, then more energy is able to move between this particular triangle. And so it is with education. When you are in the Great Pyramid of, 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 of Giza or any of the pyramids, whatever you transmit there is able to be amplified because energy moves within a triangular space as opposed to a square space where energy finds it difficult to move. And then we have another travesty that we find within our, our modern classrooms, our, our, our modern education system, is that most of them are built of something called concrete, you know, which is not necessarily a natural substance, you know, or there's concrete in between the bricks. And what happens when you're in a space which is not natural in nature, which is not in a terror in nature, is that it draws energy away. And in drawing energy away, it draws knowledge away. And one great elder, Mahabo Sibidi, the great painter, said, when you are in concrete structures, you lose knowledge of who you are. Concrete structures do not able you, enable you to say, I know myself. Concrete structures cause you to forget and therefore go into a state of blindness. And therefore here we are in our modern education system in square buildings where the energy gets denuded and dampened in concrete buildings where we lose who we are because the energy of the space, which doesn't breathe like clay, you know, then becomes denuded. And so this, our homes and our modern classrooms are square. And this is the, what the, what's happening with the knowledge within them. It is getting dampened and therefore we're not able to retain the ways of our ancestors, the way they were able to build such great monuments that we know today. This is where we are. We might get it right with the square top, but when everything is in within these squares, I mean, sorry, with the triangular top, but when everything is blocked within these squares, we're not able to educate, whether in our homes or in the classrooms, we're not able to get the fullness of the knowledge that's supposed to come through because what's really important in that knowledge gets dampened, gets lost, gets attenuated, you know, through the flow of energy that is absorbed, you know, in a negative way by square structures. 
And then we see something else about our African homes, our indigenous African homes and, and classrooms, is that apart from having this triangular structure, which is able to hold at the top and which has a pinnacle that's able to have a focal point, they're also circular. We also have a circularity and circles are really important because if you go back to the picture which where I said, what does the African classroom look like? It's a circle. And why circles? Because unlike our modern classrooms where we sit, our children sit one behind the other looking at the backs as opposed to the front and not being able to see each other eye to eye, not being able to be circumspect in our view, the energy gets lost and gets dampened. Now in a circle, um, like a triangle, because a circle has got multiple angles, a circle has got multiple angles, any energy that, that starts to flow within a circle is able to flow infinitely because of the multiple angles that you have within the circle. So it has got an internal force that allows for the amplification of knowledge. And in a circle, we all see each other at the same level. There is no hierarchy of knowledge because we know that we learn so much from even the mouth of babes because there the children, the young ones are still untainted by reason that has been imposed by the age of enlightenment. And so we're able to absorb this knowledge in a circle. We're able to see each other. We're able to see into each other's, um, into each other's eyes. So from a social level, a, a circle helps us to absorb knowledge, but also from a physics, physics level in terms of how energy is transmitted in a circle and also from a spiritual level in terms of the fact that this circle if we were to put a dot in the middle of it is actually the principle of Nater. So a circle with the center point is Nater and therefore our knowledge passed on from the ancestors was natural, Naterical in nature because it was circular merging the circle with the triangulation of the most stable shape in, 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 uh, in geometry. And then we know that actually everything is circular in the cosmos, just like we are circular in terms of our planet and our moon is circular and it revolves or rotates around our circular planet, which also revolves around our circular sun, you know, and in our solar system. And so we have circularity, knowledge is circular, knowledge passed on from our ancestors was circular in as much as the cosmos happens in circularity. So triangularity and circularity is how our ancestors pass on knowledge to us today. And as I've said, we know it in the Great Pyramid of, 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 of Giza, um, the, you know, designed by Khufu, a great uh, one of the past, a great ancestor. And as we know, because of this, it's able to transmit into the great ones, into this, the constellations of Sirius or Orion, into Ursa Major, you know, you name it, or, you know, it's able to connect with that simply because of how the, 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 the knowledge within it is contained. And so this is what our children do. In order to be able to move into the circularity of knowledge, they must come out of these square structures in order to be able to come together, to see each other eye to eye, to hold each other, to hold hands and allow that energy of that knowledge that is, uh, that is educated to grow. So who are the teachers in African education? Of course, it is the grandmothers, it is the grandfathers. It is those who have walked the path and walked the land. It is those who have tasted and smelt and used all their senses. It is those who have accumulated through trial and tribulation, through gain and through loss, through heartache, all those of that experience that they've gained from birth until their old age. These elders are the repositories that we go to when we want to drink in order to know how our, our African education system um, is, uh, is brought about. But beyond our elders as our educators, we also know that nature itself is an educator. So we learn from the waters, we learn from how it moves and how it flows. We learn from how it goes around obstacles. We learn from the spirits inherent in the waters. In the same way, we learn from the fires. We learn from the sun that is a fire. We learn from the stars. In the same way, we learn from the trees. We learn from how it interacts with the sun, how the leaves interact with the sun in the process of photosynthesis and how that, that 
process of synthesis, uh, photosynthesis enable us to be able to live in harmony with ourselves through the food that we're able to get, through the healing that we're able to get from the trees. We learn through all the elements of nature, from the wind, from the earth, from the moon, from the stars. We learn from all of it. And this is how our, 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 our teachers in an African system are, are, um, is, is, is manifested. Everything is a teacher. Everything is a teacher and everyone is a teacher. As I've said, whether it is in the dryness or whether it is in the fullness, whether it is in the drought or whether it is in the abundance of tropical rain, everything within an African education system is a teacher. Even the smallest and the tiniest of bees from which we can learn because they are a matriarchal system, that the smallest and tiniest is able to produce the biggest. The, the, the bees show us through an education system that for, through them seeking to get honey or pollen rather from, the, um, from, from, from one flower, they then buzz around to another flower and pollinate that one, allowing multiple flowers to flow. As they're creating that pollen, they're able to go into the hives where they pay service to their queen and create this beauty, this wonderful substance called honey, which we know right now today in this age of COVID is instrumental in being able to bring about healing. All of this from a tiny little uh, insect, which if you get into the wrong way will sting you because that is the nature of knowledge. If you get it in the wrong way, it will sting you, it will miseducate you as opposed to educating you in the way our ancestors showed us. And we also learn from the great ones. We learn from the great ones such as uh, Isanusi Vuzoma Zulu Kredo Mutra, who we know passed on exactly four months ago, you know, yesterday, and who came to bring us the wealth of knowledge through multiple media, through his artworks, through his paintings, through his sculptures, through his words, through his storytelling, you know, through the symbols and the sigils that he put out there, through his silence, through everything he wore, through the way he carried himself. This is how our African and education system is passed on. So what was the methodology of our African education system? Games. Games, instead of sitting in a classroom behind each other, getting bored, thinking about where would much rather be, thinking about the games we'd much rather be playing. Our African elders taught through games because they realized that in play, kids, uh, the ability to play it softens the mind and softens the brain. It makes it pliable in such a way that one is able to absorb and understand and recode the neural networks in such a way that it is retained. And that's where in such a way that it is strategically placed to enable us to be able to solve for the future. So games are instrumental in the African education system to allowing us to unpack and to know the mysteries of nature. And I mean, whether we have, you know, you know, games such as Muraba Raba, they teach us how to, to, to be in strategy. You know, it teaches us how to seek an opponent. You know, they call it the African chess, but this existed long before chess existed. You know, where our elders came together in many different ways in order to see how do we manage war? because we see that there's conflict blurring and they'd manage war by going to this particular game in order to see the strategy, in order to see the tactics of one, one, one set of warriors you know, with, with another, in order to see what other elements should be taken to place. How is nature set about? You know, how is it that the sun is gonna set at this particular time and cast a shadow on that particular place? How will that allow our strategy as a, as a particular warrior to go into that particular camp to be able to do what we need to do? How do we bring about peace? What do we do? All of that strategized with one particular game. How do we plan in order to educate our children for the future? All of that within one particular game, strategy taught through one particular game. And way back then, they carved this in the rock, you know, as we know of the different games that are played in the rocks, you know, because this is where our, the setting of our African classroom is, right out in nature, using nature as a, as, a, as a way that we're able to gain our knowledge. And through these games, um, the mode of transmission is, is, is taken from the elders through to, 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 the, to the current generation, to the younger generation. And even in a game such as this, there are all sorts of things that are being taught, hand-eye coordination you know, which helps to, 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 to once again, to, to construct the neural pathway so that we're able to think through the future, you know, whether it is, you know, learning how to manage in tight situations, all of that is learned through a simple game. Strategy, as I've said before, 
learning how to work with another, learning how to work in community, all of that through games. All of this, how to come out of a tight situation, you know, how to jump through the hoops of life, all of this through a game. And then even when we go to our herd boys, our cow herds, you know, who learned geometry or geography or, ge you know, the, the, geometry, the geography of the land, because in order to know where it is that the cows are going to graze, you have to know the geography of the land. You have to know nutrition. You have to know what is it that the cows are going to feed upon. You have to know how many cows belong to the adults, you know, to, to the one who you're herding for. Were they 10, were they 15, were they 2,000? You have to know how to be able to, 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 to recognize one cow from the other, to know their personalities. You know, you have to know how it is that they move upon the gradient of a hill. And as they're moving upon the gradient of the hill, you're learning simple mathematics. You're learning gradient. You're learning the hypotenuse. You're learning how the shortest distance is. Looks like my son is gone. Has my son gone? It was just distorting, Coco. How is it now? Yeah, it's fine now. Is it fine now? Okay. Yeah. Back to our cow herd. Um, as I was saying, as he moves up the hill, um, you know, in order to find greener pastures up the hill, he is also learning gradient. He's also heard, learning about the hypotenuse, which we're all told comes from the Pythagoras theorem. Pythagoras, who is so called the father of mathematics, and yet who learns in Chemist, you know, where there are lots of triangles that have existed for, you know, for millennia. So how is it that Pythagoras could be the, the father of that which has existed before? So in all of this, you know, he's learning economy, he's learning investment because he may be paid with a cow after, you know, a, a pregnant cow, you know, for his services, you know, and in that he's also learning investment, he's learning economics, he's learning how to tend, he's learning how to is it still, still distorted? Yes, go, go. Let me see if I can change my settings. Okay. Royals. 
Um, once again, we are experiencing some difficulties, uh, some technical issues, but we are trying to remedy that. Please bear with us. We do apologize. Oh, today is just one of those days where <laughs> things just go that way. Um, but please bear with us, uh, Royals. We are trying to fix. Uh, Gokrutendo, are you ready to go? Is my sound better? Can you hear me? Yes, indeed. Yeah. Yes. yes. Now. Let me try again. <laughs> So once again, you know, we go we go back to our cowherd who learns so much through the the, the principle of, of 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 just just herding cows. He learns about how to nurture. He learns about how to milk. He learns about what milk does. You know, he learns about the relationship between one cow to the other. He learns about birthing. He learns all of this through that education system, and that is passed on from the elders through the simple task. So the African education system is not one where you learn in an intellectual manner and then go and try and apply it. It is applied knowledge where you learn in the doing and through the learning in the doing, therefore, you know, you come into knowing. And this is how our African ancestors were teaching uh, their education uh, in the past. And of course, the fire order sets it's a central point around which the stories that are told around the fire were important for the African education system. Yesterday, we had the wonderful Dr. Klimantinam telling us about the, the importance of, of, of story and how Baba Kodamuta used this as a medium for, for allowing us to, to, to know knowledge. And these stories are told in metaphors or told in proverbs or told in funny stories, but all of that is part of educating so that we may come to know without having to be too rational, but circumventing the rational mind and getting into the realms of mystery, getting the realms of where we're able to absorb that knowledge in all the facets of our being. Storytelling around the fire, the one that ignites, the sun. We recreate the sun around us, you know, as we, we are around the sun. So as we sit in, the, in a circle around the sun, we're sitting as the solar system that is revolving around the sun. And therefore, once again, we're creating the circularity of life. And once again, we're creating the tear the circle with the dot in the middle. And we learn through our activities. We learned, our ancestors learned through the dance. They learned through the song. They learned through the connection. And in this, the learning is visceral. In this, the learning is through the reverberation of the vibration of voice or the beating of the drum. All of that to teach you, the more the drum beats, the more it is able to activate a particular frequency, which, which activates within the self, within the heart, you know, within the mind, you know, which activates towards particular frequencies within the cosmos. All of this is how the, 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 the mode of transmission of education is by our ancestors to us today. And then the content of the African education system is everything. Everything that is around us, everything that is within us, from the stars to ourselves, to the smallest bee as we've shown, everything is the content of the African education system. And when I say everything, I'm talking about Muntu, I'm talking about the human and the ancestors you know, the humans, and there we're dealing in the realms of sociology, we're dealing in the realms of, of community, we're dealing in the realms of everything that has to do with how humans interact with each other. So Muntu, through our social interactions, is very important as the content of African education. Kintu, the inanimate that's acted upon by the, the, by the human, is part of the content of African spiritual, of, of African education, in which we look at everything that's around us, you know, whether they're animate or inanimate, and we study each and everything because we recognize that we do exist in each and everything. And whether it's a pearl or a pebble, or whether it's a water, or whether it's a tree, or whether it's a lion or an elephant or a snake, each and everything reflects who I am. And therefore, the African education system sees everything as the content for education. And then in the education system, we delve in the realms of Hantu, where we deal with things from past time. Is my sound still distorted? Yep. Still distorted? Uh, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, it's still distorting, Coco. I don't know how you set it up last week because it made the same sound and there's something you did, and then it got fixed. Um. How is my sound now? Mm, okay, just try. Let's see. It might be linked to my uh, presentation. Um, it might be that um, because I'm presenting, it's um, because it's it's fine now when I don't have my presentation up, right? Yes. Let me try again and see. Okay. The right. So we've spoken about Hantu. Is my sound still distorted? It's all good. It's all good for now. Okay. Um, so we've spoken about how the content even includes Hantu, the, the principle of time. So we look at history as important as the present, as important as future studies in African education system. So we're not just looking in the past, but we're coming into the, into the present and into the future. And so Hantu is actually the process of, of Sankofa. And so this is part of the content of, um, of African education system. And as we know, Hantu, the principle of Hantu is time and space collapsed in one, which is the time space continuum, which, um, quantum physics only discovered in the past 100 years, and yet which has been there all along within our African educa education system. So locality is also really important in African education. And finally, Kuntu, which is how we feel about things is absolutely important. You know, whether we see things in joy and when we're sitting in the dance, as, as when the Sangoma is dancing or when we're in celebration and in ceremony, and the, in, everything that is invoked or evoked in that, that is Kuntu. That is part of the content that is, that is important in education because when we raise our joy levels, we're able to vibrate at, an, at a frequency that's able to absorb knowledge much better than when our vibration is low in the realms of fear or depression or anger. So it is important in, within an African education system. That's why we play games because we raise our, our joy levels. We raise our, educa our, our, our frequency to the frequency that is able to absorb the knowledge. And what are textbooks? The textbooks are in the caves. The textbooks are in the trees. The textbooks are in the stories that are told by the griots or the, the, the praise singers or the imbongis. The textbooks are everywhere around us. The textbooks are in our, in, 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 in our conversations. The textbooks are in the songs. The textbooks are in the feeling of the feet upon the land as we dance. The textbooks are everything that is encapsulated in the terre. And then we know that we then go into African ways of knowing where divination or the different ways that we see, you know, are the ones of the ways in which we educate as, as Africans, in which our, our, our ancestors educated us, us, you know, through the different ways of knowing, which we know here we've got Hakata, which is a divination system from Zimbabwe. And in the Hakata, we're dealing with the base of four, sometimes the base of 16, sometimes the base of two, you know, so it's a deeply mathematical system that allows us to transcend simple mathematics to get into the realms of mystery and metaphysics and metachemistry in order to be able to understand what it is that our ancestors were saying, taking them from the past and bringing them into the present. This is how our African education system takes place. And our African education system in this is just actually a rite of passage. Because whether we go from birth and everything that we learned from birth, or puberty, where our ancestors, you know, would sit with the girl children and the boy children as they entered into the phases of manhood or womanhood, 
through this was a rite of passage that was being taken in order to educate through everything that we've spoken about before, how to interact with nature, how to interact with society, how to interact with economy, how to interact with, um, with geography, all of that taught with, with this rite of, of puberty, which is an education. Or however it is that we went into adulthood as an education, you know, you know, it's a right of adulthood as an education and everything that you need to know, which you have to leave behind when you go from the, the child phase into the adult phase, all of this is how um, our African ancestors viewed the education system. And then for those who went into the process of union with a male and a female or a female and a female or a male and male in this day and age, but whatever it is, a marriage as an education, the right was, uh, was, 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 was an important right in which now you are being taught that no, you're no longer a child, yes, and you've passed the phases of puberty. And now you have to learn how to form family. Now you have to learn how to form community. Now you have to interact with society in a different way. Now you have to learn nutrition in a different way, geography, in, in a different way, homemaking in a different way, you, how you have to encapsulate everything that you've learned in chemistry, physics, mathematics, in order to pass on to the future generation. All of this within the right of marriage, you know, how to merge two different beings, two different souls, two different families, two different communities into one space. All of that is an education brought in by a right of marriage. And of course, as I said, through child rearing, through passing on to the future generation, all of this a right in our African education system. Or with women, the, the, the right of menopause, going from the, the, the stage where you're no longer able to bear children, all of this stepping into a particular phase in life, all of this different things being taught in this time, where you've learned from experience and everything that's come upon there and learned that in menopause, you're now going into different cycles, different cycles that are in harmony with different cycles of the cosmos, different from those that are cycles of the, you know, the pubescent child, you know, girl who is now in cycles of the moon. Now you're in cycles cycles with Andromeda. Now you're in cycles with the cosmos, with the, with the great galaxies. This is an education that goes on, you know, um, within the African rights. And then going into the eldership, when we sit in the sages, in, in the feet of the sages, those who have gained through the way they have lived their lives, the way they have uh, acquired knowledge, and the way they have come to know things, the patterns of the universe, the fractals of the universe, such that they're able to impart to the younger generations. This is a right that is important in education. And from there, even the right of death is in education the right of death because we know that it does not end simply because your earthly body has, has, has had its time. Your spirit lives on through the realms of the ancestors. And we know that we go through the duat at least four days after passing on. And in there where you have to say the words of Ma'at, show that you have actually lived the African education in terms of the 42 laws of Ma'at, and then move on into another initiatory system and an education system that allows you to move into the realms of the ancestors. So African education is actually initiation. And it is not only the healer or the diviner who gets initiated. It is all of us because each and every one of us holds healing, the ability to restore from one form to the other, the ability to transform from one form to the other. And therefore African education is an initiatory system, which takes us from the most, the most, the most manifest or the most tangible aspects of Geb into the, the, the realms of Oset, you know, the realms where we're able to know and to learning, because she's the one who governs learning, into the realms of imagination through Heteru, who shows us how to, how, to, how to imagine and how to problem solve, into the realms of Sebek, who is the one who communicates that which he has imagined from Heteru and that which has been learned from Oset into the realms of Heru, who is able to circumspect and to see and to take all of that which has been communicated into the realms of knowing, into the realms of Herakuti, who is able to analyze and to de delineate what is true education and what is not, because what is he protecting? He's protecting Ma'at, who says there is no education that cannot be interdependent, interrelated, or inter interconnected with everything. And there's no education that cannot be suitable education if it is not formed according to the laws of nature, the laws of Nater, the laws of Ma'at. 
who then takes this into the realms of secret where the creation happens and power, spiritual power takes place in order for one to have the fullness of wisdom, the knowledge of everything in the, in, in, in the cosmos through wisdom, through Tehuti, finally taking us into the realms of Osir, where we're able to proclaim that I am God, I am Osir, you know, and from there ascend into the nether realms, into the realms of Amen, the realms of Neter, the realms of all that is, the realms of Nut, the realms of the primordial, because actually all our education system is taking, is al allowing us to move up the tree of life into becoming God and Neter. And so when we use this initiation, uh, initiation, we're able to contextualize our education system and know that education is for the now. It helps us to know how to deal with the, with the challenges that we have today, whether it is this pandemic that we have amongst us, whether it is how br police brutality that we've seen in the past, whether it is a gender-based violence that we see amongst us, whether it is the environmental or you know, economic recession, whether it is the wars, whether it is poverty, whether it is everything that is plaguing us today. When we see education as an, initi as an initiation, we're able to take it into a place where we're able to problem solve through the ways that our ancestors did, knowing that the reason for education is so that we know how to deal actually with the cosmos, that we know how to work with the forces of nature, no matter how they come upon us. Even when they act against us, we know how to flow with that in, in order to know how we were able to, um, to impact upon that which is happening around us and how we are in turn able to impact upon creating a better future. And when we do this, then we live in Ntu as Muntu, Kintu, Hantu and Kuntu. And therefore we're learning in the way education took place in Kemet where each of the different temples, whether it was Anu or Kemenu or Menefer or Waset or Abdu or Edfu or Dendera, all of those, where they sat using these ways of education in order to build the great civilization that we know it today, the great Kemet. So instead of going from one part, we know that we go to the whole. And therefore we know that I am because we are, I am because you are, I am because it is, he is, he, he is, it is, and this, is our African education system, Tokozani. Uh, Tawaza Koko, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, as we are presenting uh, as African people, how imparted, uh, you know, knowledge um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very, very, very heavy task that is upon our shoulders because if we don't do this and keep uh, talking about it and not only talk, but uh, put, uh, you know, strategies, uh, you know, for implementation because it needs to be re-implemented. Because if we, we don't do that, um, uh, uh, not only are we perpetuating the slave mentality, you know, upon uh, generations that, you know, that are to come. But uh, we are just messing up the future because as Ukoko said, uh, you know, the African education system sees everything as one, you know, as a, uh, you know, pattern of one, the netter, um, uh, uh, that uh, everything else, uh, you know, in the universe is part of the netter. So we have to go back There, go, go, a, get to the point whereby we are able to set up a foundation for you know future generations to actually walk on this road, you know, which is uh, taking them uh, you know back home. Uh, Coco, you know uh, the current system now, it's like uh, when you are being educated, you are being turned uh, you know like a robot, so that uh, we are able to actually fit in within uh, you know um, uh, the structure of, uh, you know, these Westerners they, that came to colonize us. Uh, what's your take on that, Coco? Absolutely, Mkulu. And I think um, I will maybe focus on two different education systems uh, that I'm more familiar with. And uh, that is the, the, the Bantu, uh, 
Bantu education system in South Africa during the apartheid system, and then uh, the education system in Zimbabwe. Can you hear me? It says my speaker is not working. Can, can you hear me, Kulu? Can hear you, Coco. You can oh, go ahead. Okay. okay. Yes. Uh, I just said my speaker was not working. So we know that in the, the education system of you know, South Africa, um, there was a, a huge change or there was a huge split in terms of how European or those of European descent were being educated and how those of African descent were being educated. And a lot of this firstly was a miseducation, firstly, you know, in bringing you know, about the colonial artifacts of the Bible and the gun, firstly was to remove you know, the, the ways, the old ways that we, we were educated in order for one to remove the knowledge of self, you know, from the education system. But even then, when then uh, a, a new education system was, was, was placed upon that, that particular education system was aimed at, as you said, creating robots, but creating robots who have lost, A, their, their connection to self, B, their connection to spirit, C, their connection to their ancestors, and therefore their connection to everything they need in order to be able to find solutions for the future. There was a slightly different approach in Zimbabwe. In Zimbabwe, they recognized that they didn't have enough um, labor in order to build what they needed. So they upped the education system of the Africans a bit in order to create clerks, you know, people who would work as clerks in able to make their businesses run in such a way that they would be successful. And, uh, but whatever it was, they wanted to create robots that are not able to think for themselves, that only think in a Europeanized way. And therefore I growing up in Zimbabwe as a young child knew um, all the general knowledge uh, about Europe and uh, I couldn't give you the general knowledge about Africa, you know, because it was moved away from me. And I remember during uh, Christmas time, uh, Christmas, the Western Christmas time, we would be singing stories about jingle bells and playing in the snow and and yet there was no snow in Zimbabwe. So we were being completely, and it would be sweltering, it would be 36 degrees as we were singing these songs about the snow and building snowmen and all sorts of things which are completely denuded from our African culture. Even this, the, play, the songs that little children would play, things like, for instance, Ringa Ringa Roses that little children would play in, uh, at, at primary school, where we wouldn't know that the children were actually singing about the great plague, you know, that was in Europe at the time. And this is just something that's been infiltrated to our, our youth, you know, creating them into robots of Europe, as opposed to creating them into those who know who they are. So absolutely, but it was not just robots that are intelligent that were being created, but robots that were denuded in their, their intelligence, those who do not know themselves, and therefore those who are controllable, you know, by remote control, you know, you know how we control robots, you know, either from our computers or from a, or from a PlayStation, for example, this is how the education system was created uh, in order to, um, to, 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 to educate us and therefore we would really celebrate if we got things like Rhodes scholarships, you know, because um, then would show that we had truly become true robots of the Western Af uh, education system when we completely have denuded our, our particular way of thinking and are completely in harmony with the Western way of thinking, that's when we'd co consider ourselves to be successful, you know, but that's when we'd have lost ourselves the most. Oh, sorry, a bit uh, of a technicality there, Coco. Um, um, what worries me, Coco, you know, as we are closing, you know, is that uh, how do we bring um, uh, our leaders, you know, uh, to this type of frequency where we have to, you know, um, uh, be as Africans, uh, you know, at, at this frequency where we can see the damage you know, that has been done not only to ourselves, but uh, generations to come. How do we, how do, how do we conscientize, you know, uh, the current leadership of the continent to this, uh, you know, um, uh, danger that uh, we've been facing for centuries, 
you know, um, uh, whereby we are not living, you know, everything that we do, we do it so that we can fit, you know, into the Western economic structure, economic and social structure, you know, that uh, was created by Westerners. You know, how do we conscientize our leaders? Because these are the people who are controlling our resources, and yet they are misspending those resources instead of taking us to our true education system they are making us uh, you know slaves you know uh, as they are pushing us and putting resources to this uh, you know type of education system thank you very much for that question kulu if we throw a pebble into the water it ripples out and no matter how small the pebble in fact, the smaller the pebble, the greater the ripple. If we throw a rock in, we won't create, we'll create a disturbance that might not cause that ripple. So we must be like pebbles, um, where which if you throw them into the particular place in the water, it will create a ripple out. We can start very small in our communities. In fact, even smaller than that, we can start very small in our families, you know, in educating our families, in educating our children on the true knowledge. And there is um, a book by uh, Chimamanda Ngozi, uh, Half of a Yellow Sun, in which the professor is telling a young boy who is 13 years old, is going to school for the first time. And he says to his this child, he says, you will go to school and they will tell you that, um, some white European man discovered, you know, Mugo, some white man discovered, you know, one particular part of Africa. And yet Africans have been there all the time working with that particular place. So he advises this young boy, he says, in the test, you write what it is that they tell you. But when you come out of that test, you know that what you've just written is not true because Africans have known that place all for, you know, for, for millennia and they've interacted with that place for millennia. And so we need to start educating our children, you know, straight that the people that we need so that they come to know ourselves. We go back to Kemet and we say, how do we know ourselves starting with us here in the home? And then we create communities of learning and communities of those who know themselves. And as we create communities of those who know themselves, we're able to go out and start impacting like a ripple, greater communities in our, you know, whether it is in our neighborhoods, you know, and then in our fields of community like we are doing here, you know, as, and we start creating a ripple that goes outwards and outwards and outwards until it causes a disruption in the way, as I mentioned, that there was a disturbance, there was a disruption to our African way of being. Coloni colonialism was that disruption. We too can create a disruption, but a positive disruption, a disruption that goes back to reclaim through Sankofa that which we had before to bring it into the present in order to create a greater future. So let us be that pedal, that pebble, and let us lead by example because uh, the principle of Hantu or, you know, within um, uh, um, uh, the Ubuntu philosophy is actually a quantum physics, you know, a principle which says that in this particular time, if I'm in this particular locality and I behave in a particular way, I will impact that which is observing me in the same way as I who am observing that I'm impacting that which I'm observing. It's, it's, it's a quantum physics so-called quantum physics um, a principle, but it's actually a principle that's inherent in our, in our indigenous African uh, education system or, or philosophy of, 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 of Hantu. So let us, let us begin with who we are. Let us begin with the forums that you're creating right now, like the Great Empire of Cayman is doing a great thing in terms of creating that ripple as a pebble. And it's reaching more and more and more and more using the technology that's available you know, by the, the, the system that has created it and infusing the technology that we know has always been into this technology in order to create a greater future. And maybe our leaders will be like Heru. Maybe the eye that has been removed will be presented back to them by Tehuti. The wisdom that is presented will be presented back to them and they will be able to see and to be circumspect and to use synthesis and analysis and congregation and segregation as a way of seeing the greater future instead of being trapped in the fragmented way of silo thinking that has been imposed by that great conference that split up Africa and therefore split up our consciousness uh, today. Thank you so much, Goko. I truly, truly appreciate, especially when you say that we have, it doesn't matter how long, 
you know, we start, but uh, you know, we have to start because as you say, the content is there. You know, we can revive all those uh, rights passage. I don't was end up, uh, you know, just being a talk shop, you know, uh, all the time, but uh, as we are in this period of, uh, you know, a lockdown, planning, you know, um, uh, for a school, for us to start a school, even if it's just a, you know, fresh or something where we can then capture these African minds as they are growing. So I truly, truly appreciate, uh, you know, uh, your, your statement, uh, Bobo, to say, let us start, you know, uh, let's not, uh, you know, uh, be crying about the lack of resources, whatever we can use for us to initiate and start a process, you know, others will finish. We might not finish it, but, uh, you know, the most important thing is for us to start. I thank you so much, Coco. You know, uh, um, uh, next week is another, you know, um, uh, opportunity again for us to actually re-educate, you know, the African uh, people uh, and, and, and make them realize how great they are as African people, uh, you know, the first born. You know, so I truly appreciate your dedication, you know, uh, 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 the time that uh, you give us to actually share all this knowledge because it's very difficult that, uh, you know, there are very few, few people uh, like yourselves, Coco. So, um, uh, you know, because, uh, you know, those are people like you, uh, you'll find that uh, most of them, uh, you know, outside the country, I know there is a, uh, you know, Brother Ank, Brother Ank is busy as well. There are just a few community of people, but I'm hoping that uh, one day we can, uh, you know, really, really, really start, you know, uh, doing something, Gogo, because, you know, uh, this uh, valuable uh, information, it must not be put to waste. We've got to implement. It doesn't matter how small it is. We start, uh, you know, in one room you know, and grow and, and do something and produce, you know, the type of African uh, that uh, we want to see lead Africa, not, uh, you know, the type of Afri African that, uh, you know, is so consumed by, uh, you know, self-preservation, you know, in everything that they do, all they think of is, uh, you know, me, 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 myself. And that is not the way of my art. I truly, truly, truly thank you, Kofungiti. Ah, of God. Uh. Yes, yes, yes. Um, uh, and just to call on uh, my art again. Ah, uh, my art. Ah, uh, my art. Ah, uh, my art. Yes, yes, yes. Coco. <laughs> um, Coco, you know, I'm hoping, Guti, you know, maybe next week we, we can touch on um, uh, the subject, uh, you know, of uh, the creator, the one in three and three in one. You know, where Ra, you know, um, uh, uh, came as one in three in the manner of um, Art and Jehuti. And also, you know, ju just a touch on, uh, you know, the season that uh, we are in so that uh, we, we don't lose people, you know, all these things are, are to unify things again, put to remember those things that were scattered, you know, by sex you know, um, uh, draw on that energy and spirit of my art so that uh, she can then assist us in achieving that task. Absolutely, that would be a pleasure. Thank you so much. A very important uh, talk. To to thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Bob. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much, Tokozan. Tokozan, Tokozan. Royals. Uh, what a wonderful session. Thank you, thank you, Mkulu. Um, this was indeed very educational. Um, just before Uhambe Mkulu, there is a question um, or a statement um, that seems to suggest Uguti uh, our ancestors sold out, and uh, that is the reason why we are in um, the predicament of Sigyon. And uh, I think, Uguti, it's leading us to, to the question.
question you uh, a lot of our people understand political history but they don't understand uh, um, pre-colonial history uh, <clears throat> excuse me so to suggest uguti uh, or just gave in uh, and they wanted to be civilized i think we we can can you touch on that mkuluguti uh, 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 that, that aspect? Oh, no, uh, uh, Kesha, you know, uh, partly, uh, Kesha law, I don't know whether Ukoko or Kesha, you, they are partly right, you know, as I said, uh, you know, before when Kesha, uh, Africa was once united under the great empire of Kemet. That is the structure that united Africa. But some, you know, uh, amongst, uh, you know, the different uh, kingdoms that uh, formed that great empire of Kemet decided to sell out. You know, these are the people who were then, you know, who started this self-preservation, which uh, led to our downfall as African people. So, Ukoko, uh, Mkulu, you know, they are partly right. We are to, 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 to be blamed, uh, you know, ourselves. You know, we have to uh, acknowledge our wrongs uh, as Africans uh, as well. And uh, the period after that fall, it never assisted anything, right? Uh, you know, because all those countries now who were now being independent or the so-called independent, all of them never, you know, accepted to uh, embrace the spirit of Sankofa to go back and see, you know, um, uh, what did we leave behind and bring all those uh, positive aspects? All of them, all of them, there's no one that is different on the continent, decided to accept and take everything that was brought by the colonizers here. So yes, we are to be blamed as Africans, but uh, you know that is not the spirit now. We know where we went wrong. Now we are trying to fix you know, and embrace again that spirit of Sankofa that uh, Ukoko always, uh, you know, mentions, uh, you know, in a, in a presentation. Because without that, we can never build a brighter future for Africa. You know, uh, uh, the, you know, Africa now has got so many people that are living on the continent, but it doesn't mean good, the loyalty is the same. You know, those that are loyal to Africa, these are the people we need, that is the resource, we need to rebuild, you know, what was destroyed by colonizers here on the continent. So, to admit, you know, our, our wrongs as Africans, you know, uh, because to say to us together, you know, in one way or the other, then uh, we become weak. And, uh, you know, once you think about yourself, you know, uh, and sacrifice the whole nation, then you have messed up the whole nation. That is why we're in this position of, uh, you know, that we are in that generational curse of uh, self-preservation. But uh, we are trying to deal with that negative spirit and started to reunite black people and, and uh, you know, Africans in general all over the world so that we re-embrace, re uh, you know, our home. Our home is dirty. You know, it has the rest, it has all the filth in the world, but it is our home. You know, it needs us. We can't run away from it, and we can't destroy that home because it's dirty. It needs us to roll our sleeves and clean our home because our home is a very special home. Remember, it's the first home because we are first born. We are the first masons. We are the first people to build with stone. Never, never, never take anything that the Westerners, uh, you know, tell you. You are great as an African person. Yes, there are mistakes that have been done before, but we are here committed to rebuild what was destroyed by the colonizer. Togozan. Togozan, Togozan Mkulu. Royals, nizwele genani uguti utaba luwe tulu hamba ganjani. Nempe la gui kuni sogo nuguti which then led us to the situation we need to then come out of that. So uh, the process of working together, coming together 
the process of Sankofa now needs to begin. Sibuyele le endulo siolanda uluazi. Mas masitige asibuye masiswe ni skazagona loko guti. Let us go back and learn the greatness of our ancestors. Learn guti babenzani o koko so that we can then come back uh, and bring that knowledge to the fore, teach our children the right things, the right way, uh, so that uh, and go forward uh, without uh, the Europeans. Um, we need to come out of these systems and education is obviously very, very important as you have learned today. I am also learning. And is very, very important. And it is important that we understand exactly the importance of uh, our, 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 our knowledge uh, needs to be brought forward so that uh, it is tailor-made for the African child, so that it is relevant to the African child. About Indong, the concrete, how that negatively affects uh, the learning of our children. So we need to now go back and, and relive that greatness. But before we even think of reliving the greatness, we need to understand what it is. And we can never thank Umkulun Tsengiza enough for bringing us that type of knowledge. We can never thank Koko Rutendo enough for bringing us that knowledge. Siti Seabonga Mkulu, Seabonga Koko, Togo Zangini Nonge Broyos. Let's meet again next Sunday um where we 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 learn again um umkulu ntsengeza will bring this knowledge uko and i will also bring forward the knowledge city siabong agini nonke um for tuning in uh and we thank you for your patience as well we've had some technical issues here and there uh, thank you for your patience royals uh, thank you for being with us thank you for your understanding you are absolutely important to us siyabonga uh, royals for buying the book keep buying the book as well uh, that is very helpful to to gek um, uh, you can email your orders to gek.empire at gmail.com for the book, uh, as well as the African calendar, um, and for other information. Please, when you, when you make the order, please leave us your address or at least specify how you would like your book to, to, how you would like to receive your book, whether you want your book to be posted to you. But do remember, Guti, the postage, is for, the postage uh, cost is for your account royals. Um, and uh, you may also uh, 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 collect the book from Eskodwe and Esoweto, um, but do let us know so that we understand uh, how to prepare your book for you. But thank you so much for your patronage. Thank you so much for your time and your support. Um, Kulu, uh, your parting words, Abese Seava. Kulu, you know, when I catch a good Sloko Sitola Lili Tuba, because it has, uh, you know, um, uh, been, uh, you know, much clearer for me to say that uh, if Tina as a GEK um, uh, and ZMF, we don't do this work, Africans are doomed. You know, a lot of people are afraid to touch on this subject. And uh, we've got to be bold enough. You know, in our synthesis, you know, Amakosi, Amakosi guys, the people who are brave, ready to lay the, down their lives, you know, the future, you know, generate maybe cool, Alabama, to look at the band who were there before Amavada, they are just cowards, you know, so cowardice will never assist us in terms of rebuilding, you know, um, uh, this thing that uh, we need to rebuild, which is the great empire of Kemet that once uh, ruled the world and united Africans because after that were then thrown into slavery, as particularly mental slavery. So let us be brave and know that uh, whatever decision we make today is going to affect generations to come. So we have to think as African people. 
not uh, you know um, uh, people about Kamala Zil. You don't know whether we are in Europe or in, uh, we are in Africa in terms of your consciousness. You've got to make African, you know, culture, the culture of choice. Live it. Just live it. You know, you'll see the difference. Uh, you, you know, like Ukoko says, you know, Ugulashela and Jelapis, you know, sometimes it will create a ripple effect. Then to school, man, I am man, you know, I 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 vibration as a vibration as a vibrator guyo. so that uh, you know all coco because remember i always say the more you delay you know or or you 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 are colonized la ekan uh, you are delaying the full expression because all coco tina we are the living ancestors so if we are colonized like makanda is a e imprisonment of our, you know, ancestors, because they cannot fully uh, express it through us. They need our bodies. We need uh, their wisdom and their spirit to propel us, uh, you know, into the future. But we need to then give them, you know, uh, our bodies for them to fully express and fix this thing, because you cannot fix it. You need to always consult so that young into me shangana, is shangana wuti is shanganiswa moya, I shanganiswa igu moba into a si funai, ilo moya wako, uguti us kombis a wuti siaganja ni pambin, not your ego. Togozan makeshanya bong la kulumiti ah ma at ah ma at ah ma at ma at ah ma at na ingwati makosi. Uh, ancestral uh, prayer book. Yatolagala, uh, email your order to gek.empire at gmail.com. Get yourself a copy, specify how you would like to receive it. Uh, if you would like it to be couriered to you, um, we, you can go to your nearest pep store, tell us which is your nearest pep store, and we will courier it to you at your cost. I think it is about 60 rands to courier the book at pep. Um, uh, but do give us those details, Makosi. Get your copy now. It's available. Togozan Makosi, let's meet again next Sunday. Sabongagakulu. Thank you for everything. Thank you for listening and watching. Uh, till next time. Ama at Makosi. Ama at.